Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan, a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. In this video, we're going to set up a Cloud9 integrated development environment directly inside of your AWS account so that you can develop PowerShell and .NET applications from a cloud-based, browser-based integrated development environment. To do this, we're going to start by creating a new Cloud9 development environment, and then we're going to connect it over to an Amazon EC2 instance that's running an Ubuntu.NET AMI, or Amazon Machine Image. The .NET Amazon Machine Image includes both the .NET framework for .NET Core 2.0, as well as the PowerShell Core open source project pre-installed. It also contains the AWS PowerShell module pre-installed so that you can write AWS automation scripts directly inside of Cloud9. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll start by going to my environments in Cloud9 inside of the AWS Management Console. Go ahead and click on the Create Environment button and give it a name. So in this case, I'll call it Ubuntu.net. Go ahead and click on the Next Step button and then we'll choose to connect and run in a remote SSH server. We're going to plug in the username, which is going to be Ubuntu, and then we'll plug in the host after we've provisioned a new EC2 instance. But we need to do this step first because we need to grab this public SSH key here so that we can provision our EC2 instance. Let's switch over to the Amazon EC2 console and launch a new EC2 instance. When you choose an Amazon machine image to provision the EC2 instance with, you'll go ahead and just scroll down until you find the Ubuntu AMI with .NET pre-installed. As you can see here, we've got the .NET Core with Ubuntu Server 16.04 AMI. And it includes PowerShell 6.0, which is the core edition of PowerShell that's open source, as well as the .NET Core 2.0 framework. Once you've selected that AMI, you'll next be prompted to choose an instance type. Go ahead and just use the T2 micro for now, as that should be adequate for our development purposes. Under the Configure Instance Details screen, we need to make sure that we select an IAM role that has access to the different AWS resources that we'll need to use from our cloud-based development environment. I've already created an IAM role called Cloud9-Trevor here, but you can use the IAM console to create your own role as well and assign the appropriate policy permissions for it. The next important part of the setup process is to go under Advanced Details, and what we're going to do here is connect our Amazon EC2 instance to the Cloud9 environment. So we're basically going to echo our public key here into the home Ubuntu .ssh authorized keys file. We also need to make sure that we run an apt update, which is the package manager for Ubuntu. And after we've updated the package cache, we need to then do an apt install Node.js as well as Python 2.7. Make sure you use the dash dash yes parameter to suppress any prompts that might show up and prevent the installation from completing in an automated fashion. Python 2.7 is required by the Cloud9 development environment in order to install the environmental dependencies inside of the EC2 instance. On the Add Storage screen, you can just leave the default volume size of 8GB for now unless you need additional storage. You don't need to specify any tags, so go ahead and make sure that you go to the next screen and select a VPC security group that has inbound SSH access, as mine does right here. On the final screen, you'll just review all of the instance details, and then click on the Launch button. You can choose the Proceed Without a Key Pair, because we're going to use this for a Cloud9 development environment and not be SSHing directly into it. However, if you do need to SSH into the instance for debugging purposes or troubleshooting purposes, you can go ahead and create a new key pair or use an existing key pair that you've imported into your Amazon EC2 environment. I'll go ahead and click on the Launch Instances button and wait for the instance to spin up and initialize. 
you can monitor the progress of the initialization over on the Instances screen. Now that your EC2 instance has finished initializing, go ahead and copy the public IPv4 address for the EC2 instance, and then switch back over to the Cloud9 console. Scroll down to the Host field and paste in your IP address. You'll also need to go under Advanced Settings and set the Node.js binary path if it's different than the default, which is user bin node. So we're going to specify user bin slash node.js here, as that's the default path on this Ubuntu AMI. Go ahead and click the Next Step button, review the environment details, and click on the Create Environment button. The Cloud9 console will now go out and provision all of the necessary dependencies for the cloud-based IDE. Go ahead and check the Always Install Everything button, click on Finish, and the rest will be taken care of for you. Now that my development environment has been provisioned, I'll go ahead and locate the PowerShell binary. So I'll type which pwsh under my terminal environment here, and I get back slash user bin PowerShell. So to test out my environment, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, and we'll call the file test.ps1. Double-click the file to open it up, and we'll add our shebang here. And then we'll go ahead and add some test commands, like get module and write host dash object finished. Go ahead and hit command S or choose file save to save that file. Next, go ahead and do a chmod plus x on test.ps1 to make the file executable. Next, go ahead and run dot slash test.ps1. As you can see, the output here just shows finished, and it doesn't show the objects that are being emitted by the get module command. If you want to see the objects that are emitted by the get module command, make sure that you fire up PowerShell first as your interactive shell in the terminal, and then go ahead and rerun the test.ps1 file. You can now see the module objects that are emitted from the get module command, along with the text output from the write host command, which emits directly to standard output. That's all there is to setting up a development environment in the AWS Cloud9 integrated development environment. We used an Amazon EC2 instance running .NET Core 2.0 and PowerShell Core Edition to power our Cloud9 development environment. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.